Now, someone in support of the idea of special creation can take this line of thought even further. The larger the set of universes that include the evidence, the less things are going to change when that evidence bubble becomes our new set of possible universes. The larger the red evidence bubble, the less positive impact the tree of life evidence will have on the evolution hypothesis. 100% is the limit since that would include all the universes on our plate. If the red evidence bubble does cover every universe on the entire plate, then nothing would change. This would happen if our evidence were totally expected in every universe on the plate. It's like saying, if my hypothesis is true, then copper will conduct electricity. So how large should our evidence bubble be? Well, the red evidence bubble should be sized in proportion to our confidence that God would have created all life on Earth so that it could be cataloged into one large phylogenetic tree. If you're intentionally fudging your numbers just so that you can win a debate, well then shame on you. You should already know that stacking the deck in your favor is the very definition of dishonesty. But let's say that a person really believes that Jehovah would have created all life so that it fits in the phylogenetic tree. That he expects that God would have taken designs he used before and reused them in future creatures. Maybe he thinks that this is God acting with great economy and grace. A person might actually believe this. Well, if you believe this, you want to put a lot of universes in the Tree of Life evidence set. This also gives your hypothesis that Jehovah is the Creator, the maximum protection against the evidence now that the data is coming in. And conveniently, the evolution hypothesis doesn't grow very much when the universes are eliminated that don't fit the data. Well, we've managed to protect the creation hypothesis in general, but look what happens here. What if evidence comes in that there are forms of life on our planet that are unrelated to the rest? What if Nature magazine declares in its next issue that there are six new species out there that have body chemistry radically different than any other life on the planet, that these new animals could not possibly have evolved? If belief in creation was crucial to your religious faith, wouldn't you be shouting from the rooftops, Hallelujah! Here is the evidence for my creator that I've been looking for all this time. Well, I'd have to say, hold on there. You just went on record saying that Jehovah would not make all these odd animals. If your red evidence bubble, E, is large, your Lord was just falsified along with evolution theory. This is because you declared that Jehovah's handiwork would be completely consistent with evolution theory. Jehovah is not the only proposed God. There are other possible universes where some other polytheistic religion might be true. Originally, these sets of universes were very small because you didn't give them much credibility. But now this falsifying evidence takes a bite out of the number of universes where Jehovah is the Lord and Creator. Jehovah now has to share a sliver of the remaining plate with other religious deities like some of the Japanese Shinto gods, since a committee of gods might provide a better explanation for all the varied design on Earth. If you're a supporter of creation, you might already realize this. But you might be thinking, well, I can just backpedal if the evidence comes in the other way. I haven't published my opinion in any magazine article, so who's going to hold me to it? Well, you can't have it both ways. If your sets of evidence for the two different outcomes add up to more than 100%, you're offering what statisticians call a Dutch book wager to the opposing point of view. A Dutch book wager is a well-known con in gambling, and it's not a compliment to Dutch bookies. A Dutch book is made when a clever gambler places a set of bets that guarantee a profit, no matter what the outcome of the bets. If you do this, you still have a personal honesty problem. If you didn't know that before, you do now. Filling in the probabilities in a Bayes equation is a difficult thing. In the upcoming videos, we're going to try to do it with as much care and honesty as possible so that we can get closer to the truth.